Viltrox gave us autofocusing budget friendly lenses for Nikon Z cameras. There was 85mm first and 24 and 35 and now you can also buy this nifty 50. Viltrox 50mm f1.8 Z. There's literally no doubt that Nikon own lenses are superb and in a league of their own, but they are also very expensive and not necessarily all affordable for everyone. There's no other options either as Sigma and Tamron do not make Nikon Z lenses yet. So if you do want to save some money and use more lenses on your Nikon Z camera, these Viltrox lenses could be the answer. You'll easily discover that these are actually very good and not just novelty lenses. I'm a huge fan of 50mm focal length and this 50mm ticks all the boxes. Affordable, very affordable, small on the lens that does deliver great results. Stick around to find out more, don't go anywhere, don't skip, keep watching. tell you something, I do like branded lenses. The Nikons, Sonys, Canons, Fujis and Lumix, you know what you are getting as they are made and optimized for their own brand of cameras and, and you get what you pay for. But I really, really like the underdogs. I'm always attracted to lesser known brands or products that are not necessarily mainstream, very known or used by everyone. Viltrox have been doing lenses for a while now and I have reviewed several of them here on my channel and I also shoot professionally with few of them. They certainly are much better than most people think and presume. Disclaimer time. I have noticed while editing this video that actually I'm saying a lot of the same things I said in my previous reviews of Viltrox lenses the 24 and 35 and 85. That's because these lenses are pretty much identical. They are identical optically. So yeah, unknown to me, I have reviewed this lens, the 50mm, as a brand new entity, but it does exactly the same results with a different focal length than the others in the series. So if you have seen my previous videos or you're going to watch them in the future, yeah, they, they, they are pretty much the same. This 50mm is no exception, very easy to shoot with, I didn't have to fight it at all even in difficult lighting conditions. The autofocus has got no problems and it works just as good as with any Nikon lens, fast, accurate and completely silent. The images it produces are not insanely sharp or clinical, but sharpness can be tweaked in post and unless you intend to pixel peep at stupid magnifications or print extremely large images, this will never be noticeable to the naked eye, especially when using them online. The sharpness is there, don't get me wrong, it's just maybe tiny bit softer wide open than you would get with maybe Nikon lens. It produces nice soft bokeh with bags of character more associated with vintage lenses than all singing and dancing modern equivalents. Really good color and contrast, not low, not low budget looking images at all. There's some visible bulging and chromatic aberration, nothing unusual here and seen often even with expensive lenses these days. This is all very easily fixable in post if that really bothers you. It's a lens that is perfect for everyday shooting scenarios, giving you that natural field of view. Not too tight and not too wide and it is suitable for pretty much every type of photography. Great for portrait or street photography and so much more. Need to talk about video performance here as well, silent and accurate autofocusing and totally giving the Nikon run for their money. Absolutely suitable for professional work. Focus by wire, standard with all new lenses that are made for photography and video. There's a very little focus breathing visible, way below average. Focus breathing is the effect when lens looks like it is zooming in when changing the focus from something close to, closer to you to something further away. Almost invisible here, really under control. Build quality, it is a very similar build and looking lens to the others in this series. Apart from 85mm, that one is larger than, than the rest. Well built, good looking and light as well. Weight of only 390 gram definitely makes it nifty. There's no buttons on the lens but it features manual aperture ring that can be put into a auto mode so you can control aperture electronically by the camera as well. It is clickless when turned for changing aperture smoothly when filming but it does like with all other Viltrox lenses make some plastic on plastic rubbing sound when turned. Not, not really much. 
I prefer to see the aperture ring with clicks. Better for photography as you can feel how much you turn it without looking at the lens. And I always would use variable ND and ND filters for controlling the brightness of the video while shooting the video anyway. Small filter thread of 55 millimeter, making any filters that you might need, including NDs, cheaper to buy. There's no image stabilization or weather sealing built in at all. All built from standard tough plastic and the only thing that annoys me or frustrates me about this about its build is the lens hood. It looks okay. It's made of the thick but light plastic, but it feels somehow cheap when you try to put it on uh, and can be sometimes, yeah, fiddly, exactly that. Especially when putting it upside down to put the lens away. It's, yeah, it's, it's a little bit fiddly. Sometimes it works, sometimes you have to fight it. Not a big problem as it's just a plastic lens hood already. There's also a USB-C socket near the mount of the lens for future firmware updates. Value for money, not a secret, it's a budget-friendly lens retailing for £280 here in UK or $379 in US, making it nearly half price of the Nikon-owned 50mm f1.8 lens. Really good value for money considering that it actually works well and delivers great results. This is a lens that is Perfect choice when you'd like to extend your focal range you shoot with or add to when you need that wider aperture and depth of field without spending a lot of money. Is Nikon 50mm f1.8 twice better than this? I really doubt it. This is a very, very good alternative. Conclusion, I will have no problem shooting with this lens professionally. The truth is that it's not the bad lens at all. It's what and how you shoot with it that is going to be more detrimental in what results you get with it. The price makes it a really attractive option for any full-frame Nikon Z camera, especially that there's nothing else apart from Nikon own lenses to choose from. The quality it delivers is on par with a lot of lenses out there that cost significantly more. Not disappointing at all, and one that I will definitely be shooting with more in the future. Recommended. And this is it from me. I hope this video was in any way helpful or informative. If it was, please give me that thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. There's no buttons on the lens, but it features a manual aperture ring that can be put. <laughs> Mistakes. Really good value for money, considering that it actually works well. Wow, 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 wow. I don't know what I'm doing here, really. Okay, disclaimer time. I have noticed what I didn't. Wow, 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 wow.